Hello everyone, this is Panzer J, back with a new video. And again, this video is going to be on uh, Historical Board Gaming's Global War 1939. Uh, this particular game you're looking at, this uh, this board, um, was a game we played yesterday. Me and a buddy from work, we'll call him the Incredible Falk. He took on the role of uh, the Allies. So the United States, Great Britain... France, China, Far East Command, Soviet Union, and Anzac. And I took on the role of the Axis powers, Germany, Japan, and Italy. Um, so just the two of us. Um, took about eight hours yesterday from about 10 in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening. And we've completed five turns. So every country um, has gone um, for five turns. So right at the beginning of turn six, which will be uh, Germany's turn as they go first and um, um, every round. So just kind of recapping some of what's been going on um, in the first five turns. Um, if I kind of pan out a little bit, kind of hard to see down at the Pacific end, but I'll walk around so you can kind of take a look and see where things are at. Actually, the game is uh, pretty even. I would say at this point, it's still a toss up. There's something... Uh, that's going to happen here on turn six for Germany, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, which will probably decide the game. It goes my way, then um, I'll probably be able to pull it out. If not, then I'm going to be in a little bit of trouble as the Axis powers. Um, and if my opponent does happen to see this video before he comes back over next week, no big deal because... Again, I get to go first in this round as Germany, and then I get to go second in the round as Japan. So um, he can't counter any of what I plan on doing um, on these um, on this next turn here. So um, at the beginning of the game, Germany did their usual. Um, took out France, took out Poland, activated the four... Um, Axis Minor Powers, Bulgaria, Hungary, Finland. Um, when France fell, Germany did um, uh, initiate the Vichy rule. So we had a role for the ships and the territories. And um, the territories went pretty good for Germany, but the ships did not. Um, which we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, Denmark fell, Norway fell. You know, all the usual uh, turn one moves for, I like to do as Germany. Um, I believe at the end of the turn, they were sitting at around 50-something maybe, um, maybe high 50s, mid 50s uh, for income. So not bad. Um, what didn't go Germany's way on that first turn is some of... Uh, the naval combat, I um, had wanted to take out um, both of the, the main British fleets in the home islands and was only able to take out one because when Norway fell and Denmark, we rolled for the ships and um, the incredible Falk got some really good rolls and uh, both the Norwegian um Coastal battleships went to Britain. I think a destroyer went there. Um, no, it was a coastal sub and then a destroyer from um, Denmark. So he got like four ships and they all went up into Sea Zone 14 to add to what is already quite a bit um, there at the beginning of the game for the British. So there was no way I could take out that fleet and the fleet over in Sea Zone um, 23. I, I just did not have enough air power and naval power to do both. So I did take out the fleet in 14, even with all those um, Norwegian ships that backed it up, but that was all I could do. So I had to leave um, the fleet in Sea Zone 23 alone, and that kind of was like a domino effect for uh, the rest of the game. Um, and as you can see, if you kind of like look over the Atlantic, there's uh, no German ships at all. So we, the Kriegsmarine has definitely taken a, a beating in this game. Um, my opponent also did a couple of things different. He definitely learned from the first game we had and 
Um, I think went over the rules a little bit more and some things he could do. He was doing some strategic bombing. Um, he took out my naval base in Stetton. So, I'll, and that is the only um, German naval base um, to start the game. And I haven't purchased another one. So I am at this point, and it's probably been going on two turns or so now where I am unable to produce any naval units at all. So I've given up. Um, the Atlantic has been totally given up to the Allies at this point. Um, let's see what else. He also used the strategic bombers to hit some of my factories. Um, Berlin is suffering, uh, seven damage right now, so it only can produce three units per turn, but I haven't really been producing anything in Berlin anyway, so that hasn't been a, uh, a huge, uh, hindrance in my plans. And then into round two, Germany just kind of built up a little bit, attacked the Soviet Union on turn three. Um, them and Japan attacked simultaneously back to back on turn three as part of my new um, Axis Vice Grip strategy, which has gone in some ways good, and then it's also had consequences, especially for the Japanese, that um, haven't gone so good. So first for Germany, as you can see, they're deep into Russia right now. We're at the doorsteps of both Moscow and Stalingrad, and that's the only two territories that. Um, the Russians have units in, um, in the European um, section of Russia. They still do have um, the factory and some units in Novosibirsk, um, but that's it. So, Germany, I think, has enough to assault Moscow this turn here, and that's going to be the, I think that's going to end up being what kind of decides this game. Um, if you kind of take a look over what the British have going on, They've got a bunch, they got a fleet of destroyers, a bunch of transports. I'm not so much worried about what they can do in Europe because Germany's built up some strong defenses in Germany and France. In uh, Western Germany right there, I have two stacks of 10 mechs each um, and then a, a single mech. So 21 um, mechanized infantry in Western Germany. And then in Paris, we've got a uh, regular uh, panzer three Tigers, and four Fighters. So I've got more than enough, and I do plan on building another 10 mechs in Western Germany, uh, turn five. So with those mechs, I mean 30 mechs, um, more than enough to repel anything that he's that he can land, at least if he lands in uh, along France or Germany. If he lands maybe up in Norway or something, then a little bit more of a headache. But as far as like... Um, Western and Central Europe, I'm pretty set. And the mechs give you, obviously, a little bit more mobility so I can move around a little bit more two spaces per turn with them. So I'm feeling pretty good about my defense of Western and Central Europe. But he does have a bunch of stuff building up in Britain. So I've got to take Moscow now. I don't think I can really wait any longer. Uh, Moscow has to fall on this turn if I can do that. Um, that'll just leave Stalingrad, and that can fall the following turn, and that can allow me to start uh, pouring more resources into maybe uh, building up some naval bases, some uh, naval units, and, and going after the British, or at least being so secure that they really can't touch Europe or Russia. And at that point, um, it's going to be really hard for the Allies to win if Germany's got collecting all that income, got all that territory under control. And really nothing, um, and not having to fight a two-front war if Russia's done. So, let's take a look closer at this uh, upcoming battle for Moscow. So, I did a little bit of um, odds calculator over here in anticipation. So, if we look up on the board here, I know that says Global 36, but this is, uh, I needed the space, so this is actually Global 39 information. So the Germans are in black, the Russians in orange. So I'm going to be able to attack Moscow this next turn with 48 units, which will total 204 um, for the attack. And if you take a look, I got 14 panzers, 4 SS panzers, a mech, 4 SS mechs, 8 regular infantry, 3 artillery, 7 fighters, 2 bombers, 5 tactical bombers. He will have 35 units defending it up. Uh, total die roll 
of 166. And he's got seven guards, infantry, six heavy tanks, three fighters, a tactical bomber, an artillery, a mech, 14 regular infantry, and the fortress. And the fortress will be able to cover uh, 10 of those infantry units. So um, the odds are in my favor, both in terms of the units and um, the die rolls. So hopefully we will take Moscow on this turn and that'll pretty much eliminate the Russian threat and um, eliminate um, the two fronts that I'm fighting on is Germany. But it, it'll probably be close. Um, I think, like I said, I'll pull it out and that'll probably determine it. Cause if I, if I, if I end up taking Moscow, even if I t lose a bunch of units, he's really not going to have anything left in Russia to come back at Moscow. I've got, um, 10 mechs sitting in Romania that are going to come into Russia this turn. So even with what's left in Stalingrad, I'm going to put up blockers all around Stalingrad. So he'll have to take those, um, one territory at a time. And I just don't think he'll have enough to get back into Moscow. On the other hand, if uh, Moscow still standing and I've lost all those German units, um, Russia is going to be pretty much devoid of German forces other than that stack of mechs. And that would take them a couple of turns to get to Moscow and he'd be able to build back up again. So um, the battle for Moscow that's going to have take place here at the beginning of turn five is probably going to determine the game or at least um, tilt the balance significantly in one side's favor, whichever uh, way the battle goes. So that's what's kind of going on with Germany. As far as the Japanese go, again, they did the uh, Axis Vice Grip strategy in concert with the Germans at the beginning of turn three. And as you can see, um, that part of the strategy paid off. Um, they've got all of the possessions in the Far East from Russia that are worth anything with the exception of a single territory, which will take on the next turn. And there's really nothing. The Russians have some infantry and some artillery, but they only can move one space. And they're at this point just sitting in Novosibirsk. So um, Japan definitely accomplished what they wanted to by attacking Russia um, at the beginning of turn three. But besides that, the rest of the fighting in the Asian mainland has not really gone uh, Japan's way. And that was basically a consequence of pouring resources into um, attacking Russia with Germany at the beginning of turn three, which, I mean, you got to kind of pick your pick your poison, what you uh, where you want to put your resources. And then obviously um, it's going to suffer. Um, on other fronts. And that's what happened in China. I didn't put as much into China at the, the first few turns as I normally would have. Um, so I was building up everything for the attack on Russia. So as you can see, um, there's several stacks of Chinese infantry still very much alive and in the game. They hold um, actually all but one of their original territories. And they even have um, Saigon. Um down in Southeast Asia, and they also hold one of the Chinese, uh, the communist Chinese territories, and they've actually even taken a couple of um, Japanese territories. So the Chinese are still very much alive and kicking. I do have several uh, minor factories that I've uh, built up. There's uh, three in Central um, Asia along the coast in Korea and whatnot. And then I've got one down in Siam. So I am starting to put units there. As you can see, I've got several stacks of mechs and some tanks. Um, but with the Japanese, they're not as cost of effective. The tanks and mechs cost more than with some other nations. And they don't, um, the tanks don't even um, attack as at high of a role as say the Germans and the Russian tanks. But I need some units that move two spaces at a time to get around. So hopefully we can start turning the tide a little bit, take out some of these uh, stacks of Chinese infantry and start pushing them back a little bit. So not so good in China for the Japanese, but then elsewhere, the Japanese have had much more success. If you take a look at the Pacific, it's almost entirely devoid of um, allied ships. We've got a couple of Australian uh, destroyers. 
We got a damaged U.S. battleship and not really much else. On turn three, um, besides it going into Russia, I also, as the Japanese, used my sneak attacks. And um, the Incredible Falk had built up a couple of uh, fleets down in the South Pacific, a Far East Command and an Anzac one. And he must not have uh, uh, seen that I was within reach. And I launched a couple of my Japanese fleets and wiped and completely wiped out both um, the Anzac and Far East Command ships. And with, by using the sneak attacks, um, they couldn't even fire back after the first round of combat. So on the first round of combat. So I wiped almost all of them out at pretty much no loss to myself or very little. So that definitely set them back. So since then, Anzac's kind of just been sitting in Australia. And then the Far East Command is starting to venture out a little bit. But as far as like naval presence, they've been pretty much neutered since then. They do have a damaged battleship sitting outside of Calcutta, which I plan on taking out on this turn um, before it can repair itself. Um, so that's gone good. Um, as far as the Americans in the Pacific, um, I just brought them in. Um, at the on turn five here, Japan just attacked America. I think the U.S. was only up to like fifty-eight, sixty dollars, something like that. So they were still a little bit away from their eighty-dollar goal to be able to enter the war on their own. Um, but I was in position and uh, thought that the U.S. probably maybe another turn they'd be in it anyway. So I went ahead and attacked the U.S. on turn five, and the Philippines fell. And I started convoying. Right now I'm currently convoying both U.S. boxes or two of the three U.S. boxes in the Pacific for 10 total dollars. Um, also convoying a couple of Far East Command um, boxes for another $4. And then I had set a fleet. If you see where that U.S. Uh, damaged battleship is in C-Zone 131, I had a pretty sizable Japanese fleet. I had, I think, three regular battleships a couple of fully loaded carriers with two fighters and two tacticals, uh, maybe about seven destroyers. So I had quite a bit sitting there, and much to my surprise, my opponent ventured out from the west coast of the United States, and those weren't there. Those are his newly purchased builds, but he ventured out with quite a bit, and it was, pr and it was just about, you know, um, even. And that's the way the die roll went. He survived with, I think, a tactical bomber and that damaged battleship. But he wiped out my entire Japanese fleet. So um, I definitely didn't expect him to do that. I thought he was just going to kind of turtle maybe along the west coast and sit there a little bit, which would end up giving me time to reinforce that fleet I had in 131 to come over myself. But um, like I said, it was, kind of, it, was, it was almost a wash. So at least, you know, those U.S. ships and a couple of U.S. planes got taken out. And that U.S. battleship will fall. I will destroy that on this next turn. Because my plans for this turn are for the Japanese. And again, they go before the U.S. So I'm not worried about the incredible Falk uh, seeing this video and getting any um, clues as to what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to come out. I'm gonna, I've got still a pretty sizable Japanese fleet off the Philippines. i got four cruisers. i got a Yamato battleship, which takes um, three hits to destroy. Um, and then a couple of loaded carriers with three veteran fighters and a regular fighter. Plus, I think I'm going to pull um, some of the ships off a of convoy duty because I need them. And I'm going to go ahead and take out that U.S. Uh, damaged battleship. I can take that out. We'll bring down that destroyer from the convoy box along with the planes from my carriers. And I'm going to take out that battleship. And then I'm also going to come over to Hawaii. With that fleet, which you'll be able to make the journey because one, two, three from the Philippines. So we'll be able to come over there. And there's not much to take out, just that just that U.S. transport. But it'll put me um, just on the doorstep to the western U.S. So I'll have quite a bit, um, a second fleet built up and ready to uh, go after what he has over there. Put some pressure on the U.S., so that's kind of where we're at with Japan and Germany um, through five turns. 
As far as the Italians go, another um, situation where he's been more aggressive um, than I thought he would be. Definitely causing me a lot of headaches. Italy hasn't done a whole lot. They've been kind of bottled up. I remember the last game we had, Italy actually kind of ran wild and rough shot over the British in Africa and had, by the time we called the game, I think they were at the doorstep of South Africa and they had the rest of um, the continent to themselves. So much, much different uh, game this time around. Uh, one thing he did, as um, as experienced players know, um, Britain gets to their turn is before Italy in the uh, turn order. So he actually got a little aggressive on Britain's first turn and went into Greece and activated Greece. So that caused me problems right from the start um, for Italy. Usually, um, uh, I usually expect the British player to kind of maybe stand pat in the med, you know, retreat stuff out and get away from the Italian fleets and stuff. But no, he went right after Greece, activated that. So I he got um, the ships that were there, the Greece ships, as well as the income. And so then, kind of like with how the rolls went against Germany for the, sh the Norwegian ships, um, and I wasn't able to take out both British fleets, the same thing happened um, with the Italians. Now that the British were so bulked up from the Greek infantry and the Greek ships, I couldn't go after everything I wanted to um, in Greece, so or in the Mediterranean in general. So again, I kind of had to pick where I wanted to go. Built a factory in Tobruk. I did take out um, the ships and Greece itself, um, but it left me more depleted. And then since then, he's been uh, really hammering away at Italy. He did a strategic bombing run on um, Turin, and that's now damaged for nine, so it's only producing one unit per turn. Um, I mean, I got a decent amount of units in uh, Tobruk, and I was able to actually take out a couple of uh, British territories, Alexandria and Lower Egypt, but he, but it's kind of like a neck-and-neck a neck race. He, he builds up his three units each turn in, uh, in Cairo there. I build up my three units in Tobruk. So it's kind of like 50-50 in um, that part of North Africa. But then other than that, it's looking pretty pretty grim for the Italians. Um, any territories that are really worth any dollar amount in, um, on this side of the African uh, continent are all British. Not only that, but as you can see outside of Gibraltar and coming into the Med, he's got a couple of fleet British fleets. And I'm down to just a battleship, uh, two destroyers, and two cruisers. So I don't have much left for Italy. And he's got right there alone a stack of about seven destroyers, a battleship, and a cruiser. And then a couple more battleships and a couple more destroyers coming. So um, he'll probably, if not this turn, the next turn, be able to take out the Italian Navy. And then I'll just be um, stuck really just putting some units into Africa. And that's that'll be pretty much it. Uh, the Italians have ventured out a little bit into the Middle East, taking a few territories, but um, Italy's kind of just hanging on, not really contributing a whole heck of a lot to the um, Axis cause. Another reason why I really need Moscow to fall this turn so that I can uh, maybe start diverting some German resources to help out Italy in the Mediterranean. And to make matters even worse for Italy, we've got a, a little U.S., not necessarily a fleet, but some a uh, couple of transports and a couple of destroyers with some men and an artillery from the United States coming over. So that'll be able to land um, in Africa this turn as well. So Italy's definitely facing some uh, some tough choices um, going into round six, and that's pretty much where we're at. I mean, uh, I think I've got the upper hand. But this is a much closer game than uh, than the last time. And like I said, he's come up with some really surprising moves that uh, not only was I not only you know that I didn't didn't expect, 
but have really um, thrown some monkey wrenches into my overall plans. So we'll see what happens going into turn six. Uh, if we take a look at the income real quick, you can see Germany's top dog at 80. Then Japan's number two at 73. The U.S. is down to 68. That's from the loss of the Philippines and the convoy. Uh, the British are at a healthy 56. Italy's at 34. Uh, France we've taken right off the board. And then Russia's down to 20. Far East Command's down to 16. China's up to 16. And Anzac's kind of just holding steady at um, 10. And then I've got my... Uh, minor power income. I have spent um, the Romanian money and the fin and the money from Finland, but Hungary and Bulgaria have just been kind of building up their incomes. They haven't really spent too much, but on this turn, uh, turn six here at the beginning of turn six, I'm going to pretty much spend all of that access minor money as well. And then you see off to the right there, Berlin, the seven points of damage in turn, the nine points of damage. So that's where we sit at the end of five rounds. Hopefully uh, next week be able to finish this up. Like I said, it took eight hours to get through five turns yesterday. So I don't think this game would go another five turns. I think um, we could maybe call it one way or another, maybe two, three turns in. Like I said, I think it's going to pretty much hit, the game's going to pretty much hinge on um, this turn here, turn six, Germany going into Moscow. Moscow falls, then I think it'll be extremely difficult, especially since the Japanese are still so strong in the Pacific um, for the Allies to win. But conversely, if Moscow doesn't fall and I lose all um, those um, German units invading Moscow, then I'll, I won't be left with hardly anything in Russia at all. He'll be able to start taking back territories. And then uh, Germany will very much um, feel the pressure of uh, a two-front war. So hopefully be back next week with a conclusion to this game. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I know we did. Had a lot of fun. The eight hours didn't seem like eight hours. I kept looking at the clock and uh, two hours would go by and it felt like ten minutes. So a lot of fun. Really enjoy playing this game. Um, would love to play it with maybe some um, additional people so you can kind of spread the countries around a little bit. I think that would add um, an even cooler dynamic to it. But um, definitely had a good time. And we'll be back hopefully next week with a conclusion to uh, Global War 39. See you then.